untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at an updated version of Blue White Auras, and it's been quite a while since Core Spirit Dancer last terrorized the Historic Meta game, but it's time for it to shine once again. The 2 mana O2 gets plus 2 plus 2 for each aura attached to it, and whenever we cast an aura spell, we may draw a card. Then there's SRAM, the weaker legendary version, a 2 2, says whenever we cast an aura, we get to draw a card. Then the Light Pause is another amazing addition for this deck. A 2 2 says whenever an aura enters the battlefield under our control, if we cast it, we can search our library for an aura card with mana value less than or equal to that aura, and with a different name than all the auras we control, and put that card onto the battlefield attached to Light Pause. So basically, play Light Pause. If we play a Staggering Insight, we get to search up on all that glitters, or vice versa. If we play one of our one-man auras, we're likely to get an ethereal armor to keep pumping up our creatures, and we can also potentially enchant a creature other than Light Paws and still put the aura onto Light Paws itself. So you do have a bit of flexibility there, and Light Paws is also the reason why you see so many one-off enchantments that Light Paws can keep searching up. Then we also have four copies of Invisible Stalker, a more recent addition in Innistrad Remastered, a 1-1 with Hexproof, and it cannot be blocked. So this is a nightmare for mid-range decks to deal with, since they likely won't have an easy answer for it, and then we can just start loading our enchantments onto the Stalker, which is going to be a safer investment than any of our other two mana creatures. And then we're also playing four copies of Giver of Runes, a recent addition in Historic Anthology. This is a 1-2, can tap, and another target creature we control gains protection from colorless or from the color of our choice until end of turn. And since most of the interactive decks in the format tend to be red or black, or potentially both, the Giver of Runes won't really interfere with the aura plan. If we had, let's say, a bunch of white enchantments on our core spirit dancer, and our opponent tries to take it out with a white removal spell, then naming protection from white is a little awkward, since the auras will fall off, since that's also part of protection. But for the most part, that hasn't been an issue. And then Giver of Runes can also potentially help our large creature attack past any blockers, if our opponent only as blockers of a single color back on defense. The reason I'm playing Giver of Runes over Skrelv is that the Bowmasters are quite popular in Historic right now, so having two toughness as opposed to one makes a huge difference. And then taking a look at our enchantments, we've got a full set of Ethereal Armor, giving plus one plus one for each enchantment we control, as well as First Strike, and the two mana version All That Glitters gives plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment we control. No artifacts in this deck, so Ethereal Armor is strictly better, but it's nice to have both. And then we've got Curious Obsession, giving plus one plus one. When our creature hits the opponent, we get to draw a card. Sort of forces us to keep attacking, otherwise it falls off. But that's usually not a problem when we have an Invisible Stalker that can keep attacking, or a Spirit Dancer or Light Paws that tend to be bigger than anything else on the board. And then we also have the full set of Staggering Insight, which can also draw us a card if we hit the opponent, gives plus one plus one, as well as a Life Link. So that can be very important in a racing situation to make sure we don't get burnt out. And then our one-offs include a Cartouche of Solidarity, gives plus one plus one and first strike while making a 1-1 one -one warrior token with Vigilance, can maybe help us jump block. And then we've got the Glaring Ages, giving plus one plus three while tapping a creature down, can get rid of a blocker. Grave Spoon gives our creature plus one plus two and flying, can also get it back from the graveyard. Sentinel's Eyes gives plus one plus one and Vigilance, can also be escaped out of the graveyard. Got Arcane Flight, another flying enchantment, giving plus one plus one. And Comet Research can also maybe help protect our legendary creatures by giving them a ward one, and then also an extra plus one plus one in case of legendary, otherwise just uh, draw a card when our creature hits the opponent. And then at two mana, one Ether Tunnel, which can make our creature unblockable and give it one extra power in case your opponent's got some flying blockers back, for instance. So we've got a ton of enchantments that help us draw cards, Spirit Dancer draws, Sram draws, and Light Paws can find additional enchantments, so the deck can see a ton of cards, and as soon as we find a critical mass of Ethereal Armors or Altered Glitters, we can usually end the game pretty quickly, especially when paired with Spirit Dancer or Light Paws, but in the matchups where the opponent has lots of spot removal or discard spells, it's nice to have Invisible Stalker as kind of a safe investment, and then Giver of Runes gives us additional protection as well. And then as if that weren't enough, we also get to play with Lurus as our companion, so in the late game that can also help get stuff back out of the graveyard. And then our mana base, just lots of blue-white dual lands, got a Soaring City and Igancho for added interaction, and two basic planes in case we need to search those up. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand's got one creature, so it's definitely a little bit risky if our opponent can answer a Stram. So I'm tempted to mulligan this on the draw. 
Okay, this is much better. Can keep double giver plus light paws and ethereal armor. Put on black green. Turn one gilded goose, so it could be the Samwise combo deck. Which can go infinite, so we better get there quickly. It's gonna be a young wolf instead, alright, so this might be a Yogmoth combo deck then. So we can go ahead and play Light Paws. Pass a turn, and then next turn load some enchantments onto it. Can also use Giver to sneak past all the green creatures. And yeah, there's a turn 3 Yogmoth with a young wolf in play. So that's bad news. Our opponent's gonna force the issue here and take out our Giver of Runes. And then uh, they can sacrifice Young Wolf two more times if they'd like. Protect Light Paws. And we get to untap. Okay, so. Gotta make the most out of this. I could just play Ethereal Armor and all that glitters. Sadly, don't have a way to give Light Paws Hexproof. There's no green enchantment for us to search up in Historic. But if I make Light Paws large enough, then the only concern is a Fatal Push taking it out. So maybe I don't want to move all in and instead play a couple more Giver of Runes, but also wouldn't be able to uh, triple spell Giver. So in that case, I do want to make Light Paws half flying or at least unblockable to get past Young Wolf, otherwise our opponent can just chump and sacrifice. So maybe I do just move all in here. Armor plus get a flying enchantment. Could also go for, let's say, a combat research to give Ward 1. That's going to make it harder for the opponent to take out Light Paws with Yawgmoth. And then all that glitters can get the unblockable enchantments. So Ether Tunnel, I think, makes sense. And that's going to be a two-turn clock. Get to draw here as well. But yeah, if our opponent's got a Fatal Push, they can still take out Light Paws pretty easily. And yeah, there it is. Yeah, not much we could have done about Fatal Push, sadly. Spirit Dancer isn't bad. So maybe a Lurus in hand play a Giver. Could also play Double Giver and Spirit Dancer. And then our opponent's just gonna take out Spirit Dancer while they can. But our opponent is at 5, so Giver sneaking through could be effective. Sure. Court of Calling can find another Young Wolf. So now with double Young Wolf, our opponent can draw as many cards as they want, but they are at 5, so I guess they're somewhat limited. And then if they find Innkeeper, they can gain life with each iteration. Hapatra can also uh, help them go infinite. And Eldritch Revolution, sacking Young Wolf, although they both now have a counter on it. So we'll see what they do here. Blood Artists. But now they still need to sacrifice a creature to kind of kickstart a combo. Picked up an all that Glitters, that's nice. So Glitters on Spirit Dancer, leaving as much white as possible untapped. Get to draw another all that Glitters, okay. So now I can use Giver of Runes both on black and on green. Opponent 
It's gonna sacrifice Young Wolf to put a minus one counter on the other Young Wolf, but yeah, now they lost one of them. Targets Giver of Runes. Get back Young Wolf. So they are gaining some life with a Blood Artist. But yeah, they couldn't quite pull off the infinite combo here. Get to draw. Spirit Dancer is now large enough to win the game. Give it protection from green and protection from black. And that should do it. Awesome, very close game against the Ogmoth combo. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's a little sketchy with only one creature and uh, no real way to protect it. So on the play, do we try it? Sure, let's give it a shot. If our opponent isn't a highly interactive deck, Lightpost can certainly kill very quickly with this hand. And love to see turn one forest. So for opponents a mono green elf deck, this should be a pretty quick kill with light paws. Lucranos we don't care about. So devotion deck. Okay, so Griff's Boon gets a Ethereal Armor. And then we can play Ether Tunnel to make unblockable. And get all that glitters. And that's gonna be a two-turn clock. Staggering Insights can search something else up to here. But the damage has been done and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Don't have a single creature in our opening hand, so that's a mulligan. Okay, this is also not great, just a giver of runes. Let's go to five. Four. Okay. So invisible stalker. Plus two lands and an alt that glitters, I guess. Could also keep double stalker in case of a hand disruption spell. But uh, just gotta hope they don't have it. Opponent green white and innkeeper. Research isn't bad. Okay, so next turn we could play two cheaper auras or we could go for all that glitters. Opponent probably an infinite life gain combo deck of some sort. Another innkeeper, that's fine. And a scurry oak. So if our opponent has a Helia to go with it. They can go infinite, but they probably would have played Heliod first, so they may not have it. So definitely want to research, and then we can Glitters as well. Increase our damage output. So yeah, for a mulligan to four, we're still making a game out of it. And Insight was a good draw. Can our opponent go infinite is a question. Moondancer, that's acceptable. If our opponent's playing with a Rosie, they can also go infinite with a Scurry Oak. So this Cry here is going to help them dig towards whatever they need, which is a scary part. I bottom a couple of times so far, and still bottoming. Spirit Dancer is interesting, so I could play Spirit Dancer and then play a Griff's Boon. And that way we still get to draw Spirit Dancer. But it is tempting to just Staggering Insight here. To get in for more damage and draw two cards. So maybe I play Insight, attack, and then if I draw a land I can still play Spirit Dancer's second main. And then try and give it flying on the following turn to give us a faster clock. And 
And if we miss on a land, I'll have wasted two damage, basically. Curious Obsession. Yeah, I guess um, I can put Curious Obsession on the Invisible Stalker. I guess that's fine. And then next turn go Esper Dancer Griffspoon. If our opponent has a Skyclave Apparition, they could still exile one of my enchantments, potentially. Opponent just playing a Moon Dancer to Scry. Still bottoming. Hopefully it stays that way. Red 6. And then now... Spirit Dancer put Griff Spoon on Spirit Dancer, I think. And that will still grow Invisible Stalker, thanks to the All That Glitters. So now we can hold off some of the smaller creatures. And draw a couple cards. And just play a tap land. And Voice of the Blast can also get pretty large. But uh, yeah, next turn with an All That Glitters, we might get there. I will have to chump Moon Dancer now, unfortunately. So regretting putting Griff Spoon on Spirit Dancer instead of Invisible Stalker, but so it goes. And another Ethereal Armor, that should definitely do it. Armor. And that's 21, 21. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Two powerful legends and then Invisible Stalker if we're up against the deck with a lot of removal. Turn 1 Soulscar Mage does point in that direction. So... Probably start with Invisible Stalker, and then we can play Light Paws and a One Man Aura in the same turn to search something up. Getting the Lifelink enchantment is going to be very important in this matchup. But getting to resolve Invisible Stalker is huge. And for points on Blue Red Wizards, they typically don't have interaction for the 1 1 Hexproof, but they can try to outrace us. So that's where the lifelink is going to be important. But our opponent's off to a relatively slow start. And birthday escape, so they can make Soulscar Mage a ring bearer. And we'll take three. Okay, so what do we think of a light pause plus put maybe a Cure Obsession on Invisible Stalker and then I could put Ethereal Armor on Light Paws. So Light Paws first. And that seems reasonable. Now it's a 4-4 so it doesn't die to a single 3 damage burn spell. Although the opponent can shrink it down with Soulscar Mage. Swiss Spear, that's fine. And another Birthday Escape, so now they get to draw and discard with a level 2 ring. So can't afford to block with Light Paws, even though it's a 4 4 first strike since they could shrink it down at instant speed. And our opponent's going to just pull the trigger on Wizard's Lightning. So we'll take six. Yeah, if we can pick up a two-mana aura, we should be able to stabilize nicely with a life gain. If we don't, we're taking six down to seven. We could certainly get burnt out next turn. 
could also keep up high Gancho. That's another option. Opponents discarding a static discharge, so their hand must be stacked. Spirit Dancer is interesting. So I guess I can play Spirit Dancer and then uh, Comet Research. And then hope to pick up a one mana aura. Sure. And there's a staggering insight, a draw step late. And could go for Cartouche to make an extra blocker. Sentinel's Eyes for Vigilance, also an option, but let's just go with Cartouche. And then can attack with Invisible Stalker, see what we pick up. Question is whether Light Pause needs to get in there. I guess we do have two blockers now. Spirit Dancer can also block the uh, Ring Bearer. Sure, I guess we might want to speed up the clock. Draw two cards, see what we pick up. Alright, so next turn we should be able to present lethal with double all that glitters. Question is, can we survive this incoming turn? Symmetry Sage, okay. So they could potentially pump up both creatures. And we get a chance to block, so... I guess we don't have to throw Spirit Dancer under the bus just yet. Fading Hope's actually pretty effective, bouncing a Light Paws. Most Wizards decks don't even have Fading Hope, so it's mostly just burn spells. But yeah, seeing the value of Invisible Stalker here. So we're still at 7, and double all that glitters. Four enchants, so that's plus eight, plus eight should be lethal. And a wizard's lightning, so yeah, opponent definitely had some powerful spells available. And that's Xaxes. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Gigantha deck, two powerful creatures and some auras. I'm down. Well, let's see if her opponent's got some cheap removal. Nope, a Zelfern Void, so the colorless combo deck with the one ring. Okay, well, we can feel good about just deploying an early Spirit Dancer or Light Paws. Which one's faster? I guess Light Paws might be, since next turn I can Obsession get Ethereal Armor and inside get all that glitters. I think that's going to end up being a little faster than playing Spirit Dancer. Can expect our opponent to set up a powerful combo around turn 4. Sleeper Dart's actually not bad. Can keep our Light Paws tapped down for a turn. So do we want to diversify then? And deploy Spirit Dancer. Could also get the other card draw aura that uh, gives Light Pause Ward 1. Comet Research. It's not as fast of a clock, but we can always get Ethereal Armor with the Cartouche, so sure. So I get to draw two here, make sure we keep hitting those land drops. And then now if they want a Sleeper Dart, it's going to cost them one mana at least. And if they don't, next turn between Cartouche and Insight we could do some damage. Giver can also give protection from Colorless, which is potentially relevant. Jelvern Void to scry once again. Goes to the bottom. And Semblance Anvil is the scariest 3 drop they could play here. So they could play more free copies of Sleeper Dart. 
at least they cannot use Sleeper Dart to tamp down Light Paws now. Unless they play Mindstone, they won't be able to make extra mana this turn. Get to untap. Okay, so what's the best sequencing now? Can go Staggering Insight on the Spirit Dancer and get all that Glitters on Light Paws. And then we can Cartouche on Spirit Dancer and get Ethereal Armor. We found plenty of Stalkers, not really the matchup for them. Prefer being fast with our Spirit Dancer and Light Paws. So all that Glitters. Cartouche also on Spirit Dancer to get the plus two plus two bonus. And get Ethereal Armor. And yeah, we should have enough here. 22 damage. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a solid hand. Give our runes into Spirit Dancer and some powerful auras. Hoping for no discard spell, basically. Turn one Gilded Goose, so it could be the Samwise combo deck. So yeah, play Spirit Dancer and then next turn we can load some auras onto it. And Nazgul, okay. Not a card you see every day in Historic. So your opponent probably playing all nine copies if they're bothering to include one. And yeah, we might have to use Giver of Ruins to give protection from black on the Spirit Dancer. But then we're exposed to a potential spot removal spell. So, a bit of a concern. I guess for now we can Glitters on Spirit Dancer, see what we draw. I'm gonna find one of our evasive enchantments, basically. If I play Obsession, I'm forced to attack, so then I'm committing to give her pro black attack past the nice ghoul. And then, um, yeah, it would be pretty bad if her opponent's got a fatal push. So maybe I do just pass for now. Let them potentially deploy more creatures, see if they are potentially holding a removal. Although they could also just take out Giver of Runes, and then we're also sort of stuck until we find a flying or unblockable enchantment. Bone's gonna pass. We'll untap. And a Staggering Insight to draw. Okay, so... Yeah, I guess I commit a Staggering Insight. And see what we draw. But now that our opponent's got mana untapped, I'm even less incentivized to be the first to activate Giver of Runes. Found an invisible Stalker, so now we can pivot and start loading on to the Stalker instead. And then Spirit Dancer can still be a nice card draw engine. Goose makes a food. the Witch King. Yeah, that's actually pretty good against Invisible Stalker. Have to sacrifice a creature that dealt damage to the opponents. Guess we just have to kill them in one attack, which is pretty feasible here with another all that glitters. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we get there. I want to enchant the Spirit Dancer since that gets the plus two plus two bonus. And we already have 18 power, but could keep going if we wanted to. Double Cure's Obsession. And I guess we'll uh, share one with the Invisible Stalker. Activate Naming Black. Get past their creatures and that should be game. 
Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we desperately need a second land. But if we find it, our hand is pretty much perfect, so I think I gotta try it. Could always load some enchantments onto the Giver of Runes, but that's not typically our plan A. Bone on blue-red, so it could be a wizard's deck, and there's a Soulscar Mage. Perfect. And uh, I think we just go for Invisible Stalker, even though with Giver of Runes as protection, I'm likely to untap with Light Paws, unless our opponent's got two instant speed burn spells. So, yeah, close call. But, uh, nah, I think with Stalker and then a Staggering Insight, we should be able to outrace the Wizard's deck pretty easily. Okay, a Reckless Charge on Symmetry Sage. Now if we draw a land, I can still play Light Paws and then start putting enchantments on it. Our opponent is hitting for 8, so that does add up. Perfect, so now I can play Light Paws. And just uh, put the Curious Obsession on Invisible Stalker. While Light Paws gets an Ethereal Armor. So it grows up to a 4-4. And we've got Giver of Runes to protect it while Stalker attacks. And then next turn, Staggering Insight helps us get an All That Glitters, perhaps. Could also get a Flying Enchantment to hold off the Symmetry Sage. Now, of course, Soulscar Mage can shrink down Light Paws, but the Giver can still protect it from red. And Guidance will draw. That's okay. So we never want to be the first ones to have to activate Giver of Runes. We want to be able to activate it in response to a removal spell. So as long as Light Paws is bigger than Soulscar Mage, that's fine. So just Symmetry Sage attacking. Okay. And another one. That does start to add up. So Staggering Insights could also go on Light Paws itself to gain more life. Get a, all that glitters. That should get us out of range. And then with Cartouche we can make it even bigger. Sentinel's Eyes for Vigilance. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that'll do it. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough already. They can beat an 11-11 with First Strike and Lifelink. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand's missing a creature, so that's an easy mulligan. And this is an easy keep. One Giver of Runes can go. And then Giver into Light Paws. Is gonna be our plan. Opponent's green white, so hopefully no infinite combo deck, which can still potentially beat us. Maybe a 4 5 color domain deck. And yeah, there's a Leyline Binding to answer Giver. So, kind of forced to play Light Paws, but between another Leyline Binding and Tribal Flames, they could easily take it out. So what if I wait to play Light Paws until I can enchant it? I'm not guaranteed to draw third land. So I think I have to commit it and hope for the best. If I had a third land in hand, I think I would wait. So we can at least get Light Paws out of range from a Tribal Flames. Another binding. All right, that would have gotten us either way. Sram's a good draw. Just keep on committing creatures until hopefully they run out of removal. Tarmogoyf, just an 0-1. That's beatable. Okay, so we want to start growing Sram, and then I guess Ethereal Armor plus Sentinel's Eyes also draws us the most cards. So let's start there. Could also Curious Obsession to draw an extra card, and then maybe still Sentinel's Eyes afterwards. Want to get Stram above 5 toughness if possible. And there we go. Not bad. 
Now if they have another Leyline Binding they can still answer it. And we don't have a backup creature, so yeah, if they answer SRAM we're still definitely in trouble. If SRAM connects we get to draw a card, so we can still dig a bit deeper. And our opponent jumps. That's a sad way to go for Tarmogoyf. And our opponent explodes, they were out of Leyline Bindings and SRAM's just gonna take over here. Sweet. Alright, so this felt like some pretty easy wins for the blue-white aura deck, even winning on a mulligan to 4, so that shows that the deck is pretty resilient. We've got a pretty high density of powerful 2-mana creatures now, so even if the opponent does have an early discard spell to take away a Spirited Dancer or Light Paws, we might still have an Invisible Stalker left over. So the deck has the speed it needs to beat combo decks with Core Spirit Dancer and Light Paws, but it also gets to play a slow and safe game with Invisible Stalker and Giver of Runes, even have Lurus for more late game recursion, although didn't get to see it in action here today. So yeah, overall quite impressed by this Aura deck. Can also be adjusted for best of three by maybe including some counter spells in the sideboard and can always uh, adjust your game plan according to what the opponent's up to. Definitely have that flexibility here, but still need to make sure you have a high enough density of Auras to make the deck function. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.